So we've had some exciting news this week with the announcement that the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine has been approved by UK regulators. Obviously that triggered an onslaught of questions from all of our readers so we've been collecting some common queries and we've put them to an expert which we hope will be really useful for you. Dr Michael Fitzpatrick is a GP and an author who writes about vaccines and for the last six months he's been working in a Covid hot hub in Hackney. So for all Dr Fitzpatrick's answers on your questions around safety concerns, side effects, whether you can trust the vaccine or if it might alter your DNA, um, please keep watching, they're really really useful responses. We've got 400, 500 people dying every day at the moment, we can't get it soon enough. And obviously we'd like a longer time to, to be able to study what the possible adverse effects we have got to balance that against the problems that the disease is causing at the moment. And as far as we can, we know, the tests that have been done are as rigorous as possible within the constraints of the time available. And so far, it looks very promising. So the balance of the possible benefits are very clearly in front of us because the, the rate that people are dying, and not only dying, but also getting very serious illness. So against that, we have to balance a notional possibility that there may be adverse effects, but so far, so good. So I think the balance lies overwhelmingly in favour of taking the vaccine. This is a great tribute to the international cooperation of scientists that have worked over the last six months to, first of all, sequencing the new virus, the newly developed virus, uh, and then developing the vaccine to deal with it. So, you know, it's, it's a remarkable scientific achievement to get a vaccine at this stage. But in the past, these various stages of the development of a vaccine are done one after the other in a series, whereas these ones have been done in parallel. So they started off manufacturing it almost, you know, when it first became a, a, able to be formed in anticipation that the, of the success of the trials, which fortunately have turned out to be successful. So that saved an enormous amount of time on the traditional way of doing it. I'm afraid if we're waiting for 100% effective, we're never going to get it because the trials so far, the various vaccines, some of them have shown 90% efficacy, some of them have shown 94.5% efficacy, which is, in comparison with vaccines in the past, extraordinarily effective and in some respects is unlikely to be sustained at that level because the flu vaccine last year was about 50 60 percent effective and other vaccines are you know 70 80 percent you're very pleased with that as a result so anything 90 percent is phenomenally effective but we've got very good evidence that people have got covid are capable of transmitting it and what's even more difficult about covid People who don't have symptoms of it are capable of transmitting it to other people. We know to, to, so far that the vaccine can present, prevent it both from causing disease and probably from being transmitted. That is not exactly clear and it won't be until we've had some experience with the vaccine. So we've got no possibility of knowing until we've had some experience of it in, in use whether you know, it will be effective in stopping transmission. But the signs are very good and we just have to keep a very close eye on it. No, there's no evidence that that could be the case. What's not entirely clear, uh, and it won't be clear for some, some time, is if you've had the, the COVID in the past, how much protection, how much immunity that creates for you going into the future. One of the things about a lot of viral diseases, if you get an infection, you get anti your body develops antibodies to it, and so you're unlikely to get it again for a certain period of time, which varies with different viruses. And that's also true with various vaccines. It gives you immunity for a certain period of time. So we don't know how long the immunity lasts uh, that if you've already had COVID. It does seem as though having had the disease does give you protection again about having it again. And uh, the, the, um, having the vaccination will give you another boost to your immunity against any future exposure. So it's, it's, it won't do you any harm and it may do you some good. There's no particular reason why there should be a, it's not like a drug that interacts that you might uh, you know is absorbed through the stomach and the gastrointestinal system 
so uh, and processed in that way. There's no particular indication that it's, it interacts with any recognised medications, and so there shouldn't be any problem of that sort. I don't think there's likely to be a problem, only the, the question is that it does seem a bit greedy when there's going to be shortage of distribution and logistical problems of getting it around to that, to the number of people who are going to need it. But I, should, I don't think there's a problem of interaction between the different vaccines because they work in, in quite different ways. The risks of allergic reactions uh, you know, to vaccines uh, exist with any vaccine, but with all the modern vaccines they've been intensively purified to reduce those risks. And with the Pfizer vaccine, that's likely to be even less than it is with a conventional vaccine because of the nature of its technology. You know, it's not cultivated on egg embryos and uh, cell lines in the way that traditional vaccines are. So that it's, in a sense, an entirely synthetic vaccine. So that it's highly unlikely to produce allergic reactions in the way that some of the traditional vaccines have. As I say, even they become very rare. numbers that have not been made widely available yet so we can't give categorical answers to that but the early reports suggest that the studies have included older people and people with underlying health conditions and obviously they're the people who are most vulnerable to COVID and they're the most people most the most important to get protection with the vaccine. about the messenger RNA vaccine is it's a, it is a novel technology in the sense that it hasn't been used on, in any vaccine that's currently in use but it has been under development for 10 or 15 years so it's, it's not in the news in all sorts of other uh, research purposes so it, the basic use of messenger RNA is not new but its use in a new vaccine is new. Messenger RNA instructs other molecules to produce proteins. It can't work backwards, it only works forward. So it's absolutely, people are worried about it can alter the human DNA, go into the human genome. There's no possibility, that is it's not a, a possibility, that's not going to happen. The vaccine can be given to particular people who are particularly vulnerable to protect them individually. If you give, have the option of, of vaccinating a wide number of people in society, so younger people who we know are at much lower risk, but younger people may not be at risk of the disease, but they can circulate the virus in the community. Once it's spreading widely in the community, then it will spread to people who are particularly vulnerable. So if you're a young person, getting the vaccine may not be a brilliant, brilliant fears for you personally, but it will protect the older people in the community and more vulnerable people. And so by you getting the vaccine, you also protect them.